Google Gemini can now see your screen and can teach you anything or can help you with anything. Let's say you're having some problem with your PC or you want to do something. Yeah, it can do a tech support. Uh, let's say you're a programmer, you messed up with your coding. Gemini can help you fix that code. It can do almost anything. Let's say you're learning a some complex program or let's say you're learning a Microsoft Office application. Gemini can help you with that. And it's actually really impressive. So let me show you guys how this works. So for now, if you go to this website, aistudio.google.com and select this option stream real time here you'll see a couple of options uh, talk to gemini with your mic or show gemini your face with your webcam and you can talk about yourself i guess and third option share your screen this is the thing that we are going to talk about and this thing is actually <laughs> insane unbelievable let me show you guys okay i'm just gonna share my screen hello gemini what's up okay i see you're using google ai studio is there anything specific you would like to do in it now uh can you help me with my computer i'm having some issues sure i can try to help what kind of issues are you experiencing with your computer uh if i go into c drive i see some you know folders are a little grayed out it's it's not like completely grayed out like they're in like transparency something what is this how do i fix it okay it sounds like you're seeing some folders that are slightly grayed out or transparent in your c drive and you're wondering what that means and how to fix it usually this indicates that those folders have specific access permissions or are hidden system folders are you having trouble accessing or interacting with them no i i thought that they look different so maybe i don't want to see them. Okay, it sounds like you'd prefer not to see the grayed out folders. You can hide these system files and folders by changing your folder view settings. Would you like me to walk you through how to do that? Yeah, sure. Okay, to hide those grayed out folders, first click on the View tab at the top of the File Explorer window. Then, on the right side, click the Show drop-down menu. From there, uncheck the Hidden Items box. This will hide the folders that were previously grayed out. Let me know if that helps or if you have more questions. Yeah, it worked. Thank you. Great. I'm glad that worked for you. Is there anything else I can help with? Yeah, maybe you can help me with GIMP because uh, I'm trying to learn GIMP. Yeah, I'm new to the GIMP. Okay, it looks like you're trying to learn how to use GIMP and are new to the program. What specifically are you hoping to do with GIMP or what is the first question you have about it? I don't know. I, I have used Photoshop, Krita, uh, but I feel like this is more complex. So uh, maybe I don't know how to do a few things here and there. I understand. It can be a bit overwhelming when you're new to a complex program like GIMP. Based on what you've said, it seems like you're looking for some general guidance on how to do a few basic things. Do you have any specific tasks or actions you are trying to accomplish that I can help you with? Like perhaps a specific tool or feature? Yeah, I'm trying to add text. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, I figured it out. Never mind. Great. It sounds like you figured out how to add text. Don't hesitate to ask if you run into other questions. Okay. Now I want to add like shadow to the uh, I mean text. How do I do that? Because I don't see a layer option or something. Okay. You want to add a shadow to the text in GIMP and are looking for the layer options. To add a shadow, you can go to the Layer menu in the top toolbar, then select Layer Effects, and then Drop Shadow. This will open the options for adjusting the shadow. Layer Effects. Uh, I see Layer to Image. Uh, no, there is no option like Layer Effects, is there? You're right, my apologies. Instead of Layer Effects, <laughs> go to Filters, then Light and Shadow, and from there you should see the Drop Shadow option. Does that help? Light and shadow. Uh, what was that again? Oh, yeah, I found it. Drop shadow. Yeah, I found it. Great. It looks like you found the drop shadow option. Is there anything else I can help with? Well, I crashed it. <laughs> but you got the idea, right? So it can help you with almost anything. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't know how to add shadows in GIMP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there is a GIMP 3.0 coming, so that's why uh, I have this thing installed. Maybe I'll learn it. Right now, I actually use Krita. I don't know what else to ask. Uh, I mean, I don't do coding and stuff like that, but yeah, it can definitely help you with anything.
okay just like as long as it can see your screen uh it can help you with anything <laughs> okay so this is just insane in my opinion let's ask a couple of other windows stuffs let him do the tech support thingy okay <laughs> we want the tech support so how do i uh check the gpu temperature in windows 11. there's several ways to check your gpu temperature in windows 11. one way is to use the task manager where you can go to the performance tab and select your gpu and see its temperature listed there another option is to use third-party software like hw monitor or msi afterburner which are specifically designed to monitor hardware temperatures, including okay, the GPU. Okay, so is this, is this right? Like, my GPU is running 47, 46. Is this good? Your GPU's temperature appears to be fluctuating between 44 and 47 degrees Celsius. This temperature range is generally considered normal and safe for a GPU under typical usage. Do you have any other questions about your system's performance? Uh, no. Uh, I think it's running good so the, how do i turn off the fast boot uh, i can't seem to find that option to turn off fast boot in windows 11 you need to go to the power option settings first search for power options in the windows search bar next click choose what the power buttons do and then click on change settings that are currently unavailable after that you should be able to uncheck the box next to turn on fast startup does this make sense? Uh, uh, you have to repeat that one more time. Go a bit slowly. It's, it was too fast for me. I'm in the power options. Okay, I understand. First, search for power options in the window search I'm bar. already in then, the Then, in power the window option. that opens. Okay, since you are already in power options, click choose what the power buttons do. Then, you need to click on change settings that are currently unavailable. After that, you can uncheck the box next to turn on fast startup. Do you see that option? Uh, no, I don't see that option. I see sleep and lock. You're right. My apologies. No, no, it no. It seems wait, I am wait. getting confused on yeah, the UI. Yeah, Okay. You're not making any mistakes since I already have this thing turned off using some other application. Uh, so let me actually show you. Uh, that's why that option is completely gone from that. I don't know. For some reason on PCs, the desktops, uh, this option isn't actually available for all at i don't know somehow for me so you can see this option is actually turned off right now i used this uh, software to turn this off maybe that's the reason i can't see that option in settings okay it appears you have already disabled fast startup using the win toys application that explains why you're not finding the option in the windows power settings is there anything else i can help with no uh, do you know about the wind toys? I don't have specific knowledge about individual applications like wind toys, but I can tell you that it seems to be a system tweaking application. Would you like to explore other Windows options? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a good, you know, Windows optimizer, safe and good one. So I use this. So thank you for your assistant. You're welcome. It's good to know that you were able to resolve the fast startup issue by using wind toys. If you have any other questions in the future, feel free to ask. So what else can you do? Like, can you help with the coding? I can assist with various coding related tasks, such as generating code snippets, explaining code logic, or translating code between different programming languages. What kind of coding help do you need right now? No, uh, I'm just asking for now. So if I make any mistakes, uh, can you fix those issues too? Yes, I can definitely help you fix coding mistakes. If you encounter any issues, just provide me with the code and a description of the problem, and I'll do my best to assist. Yeah, that's cool. You're good. Yeah, you can be really useful, I think. Yeah, again, I think we lost the connection. So this thing, yeah, we lost the connection. So this thing is still in experimental, and you can access through uh, the aistudio.google.com. So that's it for this one hope you enjoyed it but if you still have any questions or have any suggestions for me you can always do the comment and we can have some chit chat in the comment section too yeah that's it i'll see you in the next one take care of yourself and have fun Bye bye